fluid inside the capillary is high. And we refer to this as the hydrostatic pressure. So hydrostatic pressure here, fairly high. And what this means is that the high pressure forces water and other small molecules out from the blood into the tissue fluids. And of course, in the tissues, we have the cells of the body, whatever tissue this happens to be. Could be liver, for example, could be muscle, it could be anything. And this is good because it means that the cells are bathed in tissue fluid, actually, so it's actually very fortunate that this does happen and they get the nourishments from the blood through the tissue fluid, or sometimes called the lymph, into the cells. So tissue fluid is formed because of the blood pressure, the hydrostatic pressure at the arterial end of the capillary. But as the blood works along the capillary, the blood pressure drops because we all know that the pressure in veins is lower than the pressure in arteries. So here the blood pressure is less, but inside the blood, we have large protein molecules, plasma protein molecules. So plasma protein molecules found in the plasma. And these plasma protein molecules are taking up space that would otherwise be occupied by water molecules. Therefore, they exert an osmotic suction. And the net result of that is that water molecules will tend to move from the tissue fluid back into the capillary. And this is very important because by this time, these cells have produced waste products, carbon dioxide and uh, nitrogen containing waste products that need to be got rid of. So with the water, these are sucked back into the capillary. So osmosis, very important to suck water back in. This is called microcirculation. At the arterial end of the capillary, hydrostatic pressure exceeds osmotic pressure so fluid is extruded from the plasma into the tissue fluid. At the venous end of the capillary, because the hydrostatic pressure, the blood pressure has dropped, the osmotic pressure is now greater than the hydrostatic pressure, so fluid is sucked back into the, the circulatory system. Of course, there are plasma proteins at the arterial end of the capillary, and they are exerting osmo an osmotic pressure. But at the arterial end of the capillary, the hydrostatic pressure exceeds the osmotic pressure, so the fluid is extruded. Whereas at the venous end of the capillary, the osmotic pressure exceeds the hydrostatic pressure, so the water is sucked back into the circulation. Very important application of osmosis in human physiology. And if ever anyone is hypoproteinemic, if they have low amounts of protein in the blood, then these protein molecules are absent. So the osmotic suction effect is absent. Therefore, the fluid is not sucked back in to the capillary. And therefore, edema results. There's a collection, an excess collection of tissue fluid. And that's what edema is, excessive tissue fluid. So when people are short of protein, for whatever reason, then edema will be a feature of that because of the drop in the osmotic pressure of the blood. And while we're dealing with the topic of the blood, there's uh, three terms I want to introduce you to. The first is hypotonic. A hypotonic solution is one where the osmolarity, that is the osmotic pressure, 
is lower than that of blood, actually lower than that of plasma. The second term is isotonic. And in an isotonic solution, the osmotic pressure is the same as that of plasma. The third term, hypertonic, in a hypertonic solution, the osmotic pressure is greater than that of plasma. And an isotonic solution, if it's saline that's generating osmotic pressure, would be 0.9%. That's why when you give intravenous fluids, normally they contain 0.9% sodium chloride, 0.9% saline. So they have the same osmolarity as the plasma. So hypotonic solution Pure water, for example, would be a hypertonic solution. Lower osmotic pressure than plasma. Isotonic, same osmotic pressure as plasma. Hypertonic, higher osmotic pressure than plasma. So, for example, if we had a 5% dextrose solution or a 5% um, saline solution, that would be a hypertonic solution and would be more osmotic than the plasma. Let's now look at uh, another example of osmosis. And we'll look at the example of the nephron. Now remember in the nephron, fluid is filtered out into Bowman's capsule, glomerular filtrate, and it passes down the nephron. The nephron carries on to the collecting duct. Now there's a lot of glomerular filtrate produced here, and it enters the tubules, but most of it you might remember needs to be uh, reabsorbed back into the uh, capillaries which uh, go over it. And there's a lot of saline in the tissue fluid, a lot of salt in the tissue fluid in the nephron. So what that means is that you have quite high concentrations of uh, saline, of salt, in the uh, round about the nephron. And in the nephron itself, the amount of salt is roughly the same as, as the plasma. So in other words, we have high uh, isotonic saline in the nephron and hypertonic saline in the, uh, in the kidney. So remember osmosis water is down. There's relatively more water there than there is there. So fluid tends to move back out from the nephron into the kidney and into the blood vessel, the capillary. So again, water moving from areas of low salt concentration to areas of uh, high salt concentration in order to water it down. And then we have another diagram of this same process, again in a, in a theoretical environment this time. So what we have here is pure water in this side of the tub here. Semi-permeable membrane down the middle. And here we have pure water and 5% sodium chloride. And I'll draw that red just so we can see it. So let's uh, illustrate osmosis by answering the questions here. Draw an arrow to indicate the direction 